This time we're going to call to order the public hearing of the Franklin County Board of Commissioners on Monday, January the 4th, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. at the Franklin County Justice Center in Carnesville, Georgia. We want to welcome everybody and thank you for coming. The purpose of this afternoon's public hearing is to receive public comments for or against proposed zoning applications that will be considered for action by the board at tonight's regular board meeting following this hearing. No action will be taken at this hearing. All the parties are welcome to remain after the public hearing for the regular meeting itself. And that, that will begin at six unless this hearing goes over. It could be a little bit later. We have five items on the agenda for this hearing. Uh, after introducing each item, we'll ask the applicant if they're present to come and speak on behalf of their request and talk about their uh, application. After each applicant has spoken, anyone who wishes to speak either for or against the application can come forward. Uh, the first item on the agenda for the hearing is a request for a conditional use permit by Brian Devine of 235 Henry Park Drive, Roswell, Georgia, to build a 199-foot uh, tall wireless communications tower on a five-acre tract of land located at 50 Jim Grizzle Road, and that's tax parcel 040-068. So is Mr. Devine here? Mr. Devine, if you'll come up and just talk to us about your application. My name is Brian Devine. I'm here on behalf of Verizon Wireless, and they're looking to place a new tower on a five-acre wooded lot along Jim Grizzle Road to improve wireless coverage and access to emergency services in the area. This is what Verizon would refer to as a coverage site, meaning that the existing coverage in the area is weak to non-existent, and there's no guarantee that someone placing a wireless call to 911 in the area would even be able to get through. So that's part of that issues that Verizon is trying to solve with this new site. Now in determining where to place the tower, we first look to see whether there are any co-location opportunities, meaning existing buildings or towers in the area that Verizon could place their antennas on to meet the coverage objective. In this case, there were not. It's a very rural area, there are no buildings of any size, and the closest existing tower is a little over two and a half miles to the northwest and incapable of meeting the coverage objective. The towers in the other direction are even farther away, so that's why in this case we had to look at building a new tower in order to meet the coverage objective. Okay. Now the area itself where the tower is going to be placed is heavily wooded. If you look at the aerial photos in the drawings, you'll see that there are trees in nearly every direction, which provides a natural visual buffer so that neighbors won't have to look at the base of the tower or the compound. The tower itself is a monopole in design, there won't be any guy wires, and the tower will not be lighted because it does not meet the threshold for notice to the FAA. That means that at night, there won't be any visual impact to the surrounding residents. Now, the, the tower will be built to accommodate a minimum of three carriers. So in the future, if AT&T or T-Mobile decide that they want additional coverage in the area, the tower will be available for them to place their antennas. The facility will be unmanned and will not increase traffic to the area. A technician will only need to visit the site an average of once a month for around a half an hour to an hour for routine maintenance and testing. There was a question at the Planning Commission hearing regarding whether the site would have fiber backhaul. And I did some research in the interim, and it turns out that there will not be fiber when the site is brought on air, and that's just because of general lack of fiber availability in the area. So most likely when the site is brought on air, Verizon will be utilizing T1s or some other form of backhaul. It just won't be fiber in the beginning. Verizon does try to get fiber to the sites as soon as practicable. And hopefully in the future when there is fiber available in the area, they will utilize it. So that's all I have for now unless you have any questions. Okay. The commissioners, do you guys have any questions? <clears throat> okay. Thank you, Mr. Devine. Okay. Is there anyone here tonight who would like to come up and speak in favor of this application? Anyone who wants to come up in favor, speak in favor? Okay, is there anyone who would like to speak against the application? Anyone? Okay, hearing none, uh, we'll move on to the next item. The second item on the agenda for the hearing is a conditional use permit by Aubrey Lunsford of 2234 Carytown Road, Royston, Georgia, to build a six-house poultry farm on a 145.64 acre tract of land located at 3309 Carytown Road, and those are tax 
parcel 040-022A and 032-046. Is Mr. Lunsford here? Come on up, Mr. Lunsford. Uh, Good. Can you tell us about uh, your application? Yes, sir. Uh, we got 145 acres. Uh, want to build six pull of housing on it uh, with CWT. Uh, they're actually uh, for my son. Uh, he's in the Marines. He's going to be getting out in about a year and a half. So we're going to start the process now so he'll be ready when, it's, when he gets out. Okay. Commissioners, do you guys have questions for Mr. Lunsford? What's the uh, water source? Are you guys going to be uh, using county water? County water. Okay. No wells. Uh, no. Sir. Okay. You want to tell us anything else? Okay. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone here tonight who would like to speak in favor of Mr. Lunsford's application? No one who wants to speak in favor. Anyone who wants to speak against Mr. Lunsford's application? No one? Okay. All right. This time we'll move on to the next item. The third item on the agenda for the hearing is a request by Mr. Lunsford to rezone two eight acre tracts of land located on South Fairview Road from agriculture intensive to residential single family. The two tracts of land are tax parcel 054 dash 004A and 054 dash 004C. Uh, so Mr. Lunsford, if you come back up. <laughs> Talk to us about this rezoning application. Um, me and Alex Hart bought this property and we was wanting to uh, have it rezoned to build some uh, small uh, three, four bedroom houses, 14, 1600 square foot. Um, it's located between uh, the new elementary in Cornville and Lavonia, so it's in a good location for housing. There's nothing really up, up there for like sale. Um, I had a house uh, a few weeks ago, the demand, which I'm not sure y'all know, we put it on the market on Friday and had eight people look at it on Saturday and Sunday and sold it on Monday. So there's a, there's a big demand right now for housing in Franklin County. What's the, what price range do you have in mind? Do you think this house is? Under, under 200, you know, in, from 160s to, you know, maybe one, 190s, somewhere that area. Commissioners, do you have any questions for Mr. Lunsford? Now, are you, are you doing the building? Yes. Okay, so you'll be overseeing yes. it. And we'll be the general contractor. Okay. The whole That's good to hear that it's staying in the county. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, all right, thank you. Is there anyone here who would like to come up and speak in favor of Mr. Lunsford's application to rezone the land on South Fairview Road? Anyone who wishes to speak against the application? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to the next part. The, for the fourth item on the agenda for the hearing is an application by Mr. Lunsford for a proposed subdivision located on the two eight acre tracts of land located on South Fairview Road. So Mr. Lunsford, come on back. Is there anything else that you, other than what you've talked? Do y'all have questions about the subdivision? I, I, had, I had one other thing, I, I forgot to ask you a while ago. When you have the uh, subdivision laid out, is there gonna be any buffer like around the, the property uh, for the whole subdivision, the total subdivision? Okay, I was just thinking in terms there. There are uh, the rest of the land around that is ag, isn't it, or ag intensive, or just how is it zoned? Uh, ag intensive. Okay. Ag intensive. There's a, to the left, there's a couple of houses that are kind of small Okay, so a few residential areas right there, close to yeah. Okay. Do y'all any other questions? Okay. Is anyone here who would like to speak in favor of the subdivision proposal? Anyone who would like to speak against the subdivision proposal? Okay. All right, let's move on to the next item. 
The fifth item on the agenda for the hearing is a conditional use permit for Clifford Greenway, 381 Sims Bridge Road, Commerce, Georgia, for a two-house poultry farm on a 25.15-acre tract of land located at 1579 Stonebridge Road, and that's tax parcel 054-044. At uh, this time, I need to disclose to the board in the hearing that the applicant, Mr. Greenway, is a relative. Uh, I have no financial or other interest in this application or proposed use, uh, but in order to avoid a conflict of interest or even the appearance of a conflict of interest, I'm going to recuse myself from this portion of the hearing and step outside the room. So at this time, I'm going to turn the chair over to Commissioner Robert Franklin. He's our vice chair, and he'll conduct the hearing on this last uh, item. So, Mr. Franklin. Mr. Uh, Greenway, will he come forward? <clears throat> Explain what, what you have in mind. Yes, we just uh, purchased property on 1579 Stone Ridge Road, and uh, we just wanted to build two breeder houses there for our family. And we have the, the um, we have calculated it in we have the plat on the proper setbacks for the county. Our closest uh, poultry farm would be approximately 1,500 foot away. That's side to side, side to front. Uh, the fans will be approximately 1,650 foot away. And that's our closest farm that is closest to us. And as I recall, it is in the requirements. Yeah, okay. Does any of the board members have a question? Uh, can we refer to Mr. Delozier? I know in the email there was, it was said that there was. <coughs> yeah, so in the, in the public hearing for the planning commission, there was some, uh, there was some concern from adjoining neighbors with the proximity of a breeder house to a broiler house. Um, and then there's also concern with the lack of a commitment letter from an integrator. And you know, there's, there's kind of, two sides to that, but without it, without a commitment letter from an integrator, there's a lot of things in this application that could change. Um, they would basically be telling the integrator, hey, this is what we're gonna do, and the integrator wouldn't be accepting it. Um, so to avoid having to go through this over and over, the, the planning commission did recommend tabling it uh, until a commitment letter uh, was, was produced for the, for the farm. And then also, you know, I spoke, I, I told the planning commission and, and, and the applicants that I would do some research on the biosecurity side of the house. Uh, I reached out to University of Georgia's poultry science division, and I reached out to uh, the Georgia Poultry Lab. Uh, Dr. Zabal is her name, and she's pretty much the end all be all when it comes to, to poultry in the state of Georgia. Um, they, said, they said typically the integrators are gonna be the ones that dictate that. Uh, but there was concern that there could be cross uh, contamination or you know there could be diseases that that transpired from or, or went from the breeder house to the broiler houses because of because of how close they were uh, and this is caused because breeder houses they use live vaccines um, to treat those hens to treat those treat those birds to ensure that they don't get any diseases um, and you go through like a shedding process is what they call it. You're, you're shedding the shedding the vaccine, and there's concern that during that process it could contaminate that broiler farm. And if, if the, the broiler farm doesn't get treated the same way from a vaccine standpoint, um, and there's concern that that could cause negative negative you know impacts on, on that broiler farm. Now there is there there is breeder and broiler farms that are just as close, if not closer than that in the county. Um, however, talking with Dr. Zavala, talking with the University of Georgia, they, they both said, wow, you know, maybe it might not be the county's job, it might not be the, 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 the Georgia Poultry Lab or UGA's job to do it. There is concern, there is need to address density of poultry houses <coughs> within North Georgia. And not just Franklin County alone. They said there's a lot of counties within the North Georgia region that have have this same concern. So I I think the planning commission made the right decision to table it until a commitment letter could be produced because if 
if an integrator is willing to take that risk, then that means that they've done their research, they've, they've done what they need to on their end to say, hey, we don't believe that this is gonna be an issue. Um, and that's, that, is, that is why the Planning Commission did, did ultimately recommend to table it and then re, re it or re-look at it once a, once a commitment letter can be produced. Okay. Um, uh, did the university give any idea of recommended uh, for future yeah, cases? Yeah, so Do Dr. Zavala was one that really gave the, the recommendation. Um, she said, she said, uh, so broiler house to broiler house, she, I don't know where she's from, she used meters, so you gotta convert it, but she said like 350 <laughs> meters, which is roughly, I don't know that, about 1,050 feet between broiler operations. And then you don't wanna be, you don't wanna be any less than around that 15 to 1,700 foot from breeder to broiler operation, or, or pull it to broiler operation. Um, she said, that's what their research indicates, um, and she said again, she doesn't know the right way to go about, you know, putting put, putting that on there. But I, I do I do agree that from a zoning perspective, it is it is the job of the planning commission uh, of the board of commissioners when it comes to zoning to to take into consideration who was there first. And there is there is definitely scientifically proven potential harm to that broiler operation. Um, but I think. I think if you get a commitment letter from an integrator, that kind of, that negates the whole argument. The, the integrators will say, hey, it'll be all right. Um, and that's that's why the planning commission recommended the way they recommended it. Can I say something? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we had a word of mouth for me because we hadn't wrote it on a piece of paper. But when we left the meeting here the last time on December 17th, Ernie called Tim, okay? And had me cut off. I had a word of mouth from him to see him too. Right. Yeah, and he because he worked for Tim, he got me cut off. Okay. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if that That's was exactly what happened. Yeah. I, I know. I know. I did. And then this right here on Bryant Road, two five eight five, the same man <clears> that's <throat> arguing this. They've got two breeder houses that are. Approximately 1,200 foot from four 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 house to Marjack. Right. He wants us, and mine was going to be 1,500 <laughs> feet. Right. Those are pullet houses, 1,200 foot from. Pullet breeder rolling. Yeah, pull, pullet and hens, that, that's pullet houses that you're talking about. That's 1,200 foot from. Mm -hmm. That was my phone. Are y'all in talks with any other integrators right now? And, and yeah. yeah, we have some right. options open, yeah. but we're not going to speak it out loud so yeah. that way well, we don't have a neighbor's Yeah, to that, go. that's fine. I mean, as long as you're pursuing yeah, that, that's what I'm curious. Okay. 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 Um, have the planning and zoning been in discussion about updating that? that piece of uh, they have it, it's kind of sparked some, it, it sparked some research. Um, Dr. Zavala. Has has indicated she's got some uh, GIS and some statistical data that she has put together over the course of about seven years that kind of maps out and shows how diseases spread and, and distances and stuff like that. I'm working on getting that from her. Uh, we're going to analyze that and we're going to look at seeing because uh, there there is there is concern from multiple multiple angles about the density of poultry houses in Franklin County. Um, and I think I think that would be a, a good way to address it, especially if we have something saying, "Hey, look, there is there is actually reason for keeping them, you know, separated and, and, and spaced out, and that's, you know, try to try to do it smartly." It, it, it hurts it hurts everybody involved if if you were to have an outbreak uh, of any kind of disease. Um, it, it could be bad for a, a, a lot of different. A lot of different people in Franklin County. But to answer your question shortly, yes. Closer together, right here. What's that? The same man got houses closer together. And there are seven roller houses. Uh, when? <laughs> right, and like I said, right. like I said, there is absolutely houses that are currently closer. There is. Yeah. The same uh, man is within a year. 
yeah. that was approved within a year. I'm sure if, if the diseases were brought up then, why is it now that we're trying to work on the diseases when within a year ago, he had breeder houses that I'm sure was not brought up, it was not an issue. I don't, I don't know when Ernie then went through it. I, I, it had been the last year. It's been about seven years ago. It's, yeah, it's, been, it's, been, it's been quite the a few years ago. The two houses have been recent. No, the two breeder houses on 327 are seven years old. Not 327? Yeah, it is. It is. It's on 327. 327 are seven years old. I mean, I, I built them. Okay. Um, but I think, I think a good way to just resolve all of it is wait till we get that commitment letter and then um, if we do get a commitment letter they, they do meet all the current county regulations but again even with even even with meeting it <clears throat> there could be changes to this application once you get a commitment letter they might want to change the size of the house the position of the house there could still be changes to it um, even even you know taking all the other issues out of the picture board members have anybody else have a question for them? uh just a curiosity question because i know you're familiar with it but say um they get a commitment letter from pilgrims just throw out a name right. pilgrims is essentially stating we stand behind this operation and are they assuming liability if they impact another breeder operation no but but the way I, I mean, the, generally insurance is going to cover those kinds of things. The insurance won't cover that. The insurance won't cover disease um, at all. And can I say I, something, Scott? If, if they get a commitment letter from Pilgrims or Field Mail, the guy's got chicken houses next to them with Field Mail now, right? Yeah. If they have a Field Mail commitment letter, then their vaccine program would work with their program and they could have hens next to a field of yeah. broiler farm. But if they were with pilgrims and you got a field of farm together, and if they don't work together with a vaccine program, it's a nightmare for them and for field of. Gotcha. That's the reason, you know, most of the time when you see farms that's two different, that's close together, most of the time they're the same companies. Or if it's a pullet farm and a hen farm, they're all on the same vaccination program somewhat. I mean, little things change, but they just right. got to vaccinate your boy. Gotcha. Who's the integrator? Who's the integrator for this neighboring farm? Uh, Field up. Field up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, generally the, generally the integrators are going to try to work with the church the best they can on that because they, they don't want the same, same thing happen to them on the reverse side. So there's... While they don't have to, they, they generally do try to get, everybody tries to play nice when it comes to biosecurity because it does, it does impact everybody. Do we have anybody else want to speak in favor of it? I would like what? to know if this is the first case that's come up. Come, yes. come up to the podium and give the clerk your name. My name is Elizabeth Bryan, and I would like to know if this has been the first case of the, when the setbacks was correct, that they have not issued a permit or whatever this is, application. This is the first case that I know of that there has not been a commitment letter. Um, and this is the first case that I know of that the, uh, the, the potential for disease being spread has been raised. That, that I'm aware of, that I'm aware of, yes ma'am. Generally, whenever it comes to us at this point, there's been a commitment letter by an integrator and that's already been through that process. I can't speak to whether it's been the first case or not. Well, he had a word of mouth commitment letter, but because the friendship that they changed. Mm -hmm. It seems like it, it's got, so it's kind of personal. And, and I don't agree with that as a citizen of Franklin County. Who is it personal with? It's not personal with me. Well, Mr. Dawkins that was here the last time uh -huh. that spoke, they had chicken houses a good many around. I understand since then I have educated myself a little bit about those. And I just wonder if there has been any other issues about people getting their 
application field when their setbacks was correct? I'm, I'm starting, this is my seventh year on the board, and, and I this is the first one that's come before since I've been on here, that there was not an integrator uh, commitment. That I, that. Well, he had one with word of mouth, I understand. Yeah, yeah. But then yeah. either that night or the next day, it's my understanding that Mr. Dawkins made phone calls. And, and he's big friends, I suppose, with ever who you get chickens from, I don't know. You know, I, I'm not sure, and I'm I'm not sure I'm not friends with Mr. Dawkins. I don't know him, but I'm just well, saying that this is the first mean. time that I've I've seen it come before us that we didn't have an integrator. So I mean that's that that's the only time I remember. And now there has been other other scenarios where chicken houses have met setbacks, and there's been other issues with it. So there's. I just yeah. got this count. Meet, meet, meet your setbacks isn't the only. That's why it's a conditional use. Permit. You have to look at more than more than just the setbacks. Uh, that's why it is called a conditional use permit. Um, so if everybody that comes in here from this on out, are they going to go study that particular applicant's surroundings? We study everything at, at this Sorry. point. We study everything at this point. Um, it's part of why Scott is yeah. is in the position that he's in because. Uh, the county is growing and it does. So, yeah. And, and okay. I, you know, these, the people, the, the different growers, I guess is what you call them, the people that put the chickens in the chicken houses, do they not have their own vaccines? Well, I, I think that's, that's what sort of runs into the issues that maybe one breeder uses a certain vaccine where another one uses a different one. But they're and, the same kind of chickens? And they, uh, it, well, I think when you have broilers and you have you have pullets and then you have the layers, you, you run it. I think you run it. I'm not real sure about it, but I think you run into a, a difference in vaccines that are provided to each one mm -hmm. and, and each everything. Each company has their own vaccines, or does each company have a different vaccine? For, for the same thing. Well, I, I think like Mr. All, uh, Mr. Lunsford was was saying is that there's some companies that do work together to mm -hmm. if they're close have houses close together to make sure vaccines are compatible and doesn't cause problems and everything. I, I think the the biggest issue that our planning and zoning has right now is just having an integrator. I think that's the biggest issue. If, we, if there was an integrator, there would be a lot of questions that that would be answered from that. Anybody else want to speak? I got something to not for or against. Uh, but, but several years ago, I come before this board, want, or before the zoning board, want to do a poultry farm. I was tabled for three months. For three months. That I couldn't come before the board to get a permit. And I'm asking tonight, going forward, can you still come if you're tabled at a zoning board before the board to vote on? It, so that the rules has changed in the last several years. Well, and, and Bubba count me out. I actually I did reach out to Bubba to make sure I was doing it right. Uh, the, the Board of Commissioners is the actioning authority uh, when it comes to any zoning decision. So the Planning Commission can recommend tabling. The Planning Commission can't table. Y'all would be the one to take that action. Mm -hmm. Table. But you changed the rules from what you did. Go back and look at the record. I wasn't there. I, I'm not saying you. Yeah. I'm saying you can't change the rules in the middle of the Well, you, I, well and Bubba, you can go back and look at the records. It's I, on the minute somewhere. I, I, don't, I don't know that. For well, three months. Gotta ask me. I, I did just like these people come right, come right to the board for three months. And you have to wait three months to do a project. So, and that was in front of the planning commission? Yes, sir. And I mean, that, that was not a not a question that was ever asked of me that I, that I looked at. So, I, I so, so then while we all here, this is open public. What what use is having a planning commission if what they say is table is no good? They There's no. They make recommendations. They make recommendations. Yeah, but I'm saying it's, it's still no good. It's a, it's a waste of 30 days for these people. For the next man that walks in here, this man over here, we're paying. As county, well, it might be a, it might be a waste from from your perspective, but it's not a waste from not, these, not for these, but for as far as time, the, the people that's on the zoning board, it's a waste of their time to come 
if they're if what they say is not a table, they're making a recommendation to the board. I'm just saying you changing all the rules. No, that's not. That's what the rules are. No, it, it ain't been in the last five years. Well, that's what the rules say. Do what? That's what the rules say. I'm just saying that maybe the rules have been uh, it, it been in place. Uh, I mean, the rules, as far as I know, and with regard to the conditional use permit, haven't haven't changed. So from now, if, if it's tabled, voted yes, voted no, the next, the following month, you come before the board of commissioners. Correct. In fact, in fact, regardless. In fact, the 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 code says, tell me on the timeline, Scott, because the, the the planning commission has to make a decision. I think within sixty days. I think I need to that. And if they do not make a decision within 60 days, it's deemed. It, it's de and that's when I came before the It's deemed recommended. And then it goes back before the board. And so that, it might be that. But it's 90 days. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. These guys up here know when they read, Scott sends them all the information. They know what the decision is going to be based off the, based off the zoning, the regulations of the county. They know what the recommendation is from the planning commission. Right. But, but what I'm saying is they going to make their mind up. And when you go back and look at the record, there's, in the last year, there's been two or three cases that they voted against the recommendation of the planning commission. Well, they might but, because but, there's a public hearing that happens here. But, but and the there planning other commission people doesn't have any, any <coughs> say so. They make a recommendation. And this board <laughs> considers it. Okay. It's, but it's, it's, not it's, binding, still, it's still it's not a binding decision. It's still a waste of thirty to sixty days for this, this person. For me, if, if they're trying to get hands, and I know you don't, you might know a lot about single business. You might not know that. <laughs> but when they get a commitment letter, they got a birthday, yeah. and that means nine months, six months, whatever. They gonna have those houses built, ready for shipping. Yeah. Same with folks. Broader houses, you can move those numbers. But I'm saying, as the board. You know, it, it's time, we've never had anybody like Scott in that position. You know, it's time for the board to take a look at this and say, let's put the responsibility on this man to look at all the guidelines that was put in place in 2007. Five, five or seven. Okay, five. Five. That was put in place at the board voted on and said, this is our reg regulations. You make this, this, and this, then you can do this in our county. Let him make the recommendation to come to the board and save everybody 30, 45 days, or 90 days, or whatever. The, the planning commission has 60 days to do what they're going to do. And, and, and what they're going to do is is going to be a recommendation to the board. That's all they, that's all they have to yeah, yeah, but when you table it, they was tabled, but they're here tonight. So what is a table on the planning commission? The planning commission is recommending to this board that this board table it. But I'm, I'm still saying, in the past, that's not the way it's I, I, I understand what you're saying. I, the planning commission, my opinion is, the planning commission does not have authority to table something beyond the 60 days that they have to make a decision. Right. Because once 60 days goes by, it is deemed to be approved, essentially, and, and to go before this board. I have one, one more thing I'd like to say. Mm -hmm. If we needed a commitment letter before we have even filled out the application, paid for the fee, we should have been aware that we had to have that commitment letter. It was never told to us that we had to have it in order for our application to go through. They said that we could file the application with or without that commitment letter. Now, if I we know. had that commitment now, letter. Now, I never, I never said with or without. I, we did we did discuss who, who who the commitment letter was with. At first I was told Pilgrims, then I was told Rock Hill, then I was told CWT, and generally what I do is I call the integrators just to verify this person offered with CWT. He pulls. You know, the, the previous ones with Pilgrims. I've I've got the contact information for these integrators. I can take the phone say these people have a commitment letter. I have never seen I've I've never had one come through that does not have a commitment letter. Um so now, I, I, I do not, <clears throat> should it be a requirement going forward? Yeah, maybe we should make the requirement going forward, but given given the other expect, 
Had there not been other factors into it as well, maybe, I don't know, but there's too many, there's too many things that could change once you get that commitment letter. That would, that would automatically make you have to go back through this whole process again. Uh, the, 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 the direction of the house, the size of the house, the, you know, there, there's all kinds of things that could change in that process. By getting approved without a commitment letter, you're, you're locking yourself into, we can't, we can only do this. And some integrators might, might be okay with that, some integrators might not be, if they, if they want to change that, it would, it would require you to go back through this process again. <coughs> Um, so that's that's why the research was done. I think I called two or three times about commitment letter, who you're going with. Mm -hmm. That's why that process is done on the forefront, because mm -hmm. um, there is there is a lot of things that can change once that integrator says, yes, we want you to grow chicken sports, but we want this house to be ten foot wide, six foot longer. You know, then, then you're going through setbacks. Yeah. You're, 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 you're changing, especially on y'all's, because y'all's. You ain't got much room to, to, to maneuver on y'all's. Um, there, there, it, it's, a, it's a tight track of land already, um, so that's why that's why I disclosed that information to the planning commission, and that's why the planning commission made that recommendation. Okay. And if we've been aware of when we when y'all had tabled when the planning commission board when they had tabled it that night. We were told they needed to find out about the diseases. If we know, if we knew, someone, look, you need a commitment letter. By the time we had the next meeting, we would well, have and the pursued that. Uh, the commitment letter was was discussed as well mm -hmm. uh, with it. So that was, you know, that was, I know it was discussed because I know we discussed the same thing about you're, you're locking yourself into. And see, because we discussed our soon to be commitment letter, it was flushed down the drain by our neighbor because he did not want that there. Right, and I, like I said, when, when I called the, the integrator that I was told that you were gonna grow with, they said that they y'all did not have a commitment letter, not only did y'all not have a commitment letter, but they didn't have, they weren't given any other commitment letters through 2021, mm -hmm. so they wouldn't, they wouldn't have even even given you one by December of 2021. Well, we were told different, and that so, was before our neighbor had called. Right. We were told different. We were told much the same time. Right. So I don't. I know. I know. Talking to the, the individual at the with the integrator that makes the decisions that a commitment letter was never given. No, a commitment letter had never been given, but it ain't that we didn't ever talk about. It. Right, and, and, oh, and that's when we left this meeting that night, the phone call was made. Right, and then, you know, commitment letter is a signed contract between you and the integrator. Yeah. So that, that kind of, that, that locks you in. So that's, not, so yeah, when, when I talked to him, they said there was gonna be no commitment letters through 2021, and they had no way to, they had no way to look at 2022. Of course, after Ernie talked to him, no, they wouldn't want to start. Because they were friends. I don't. I don't know who talked to who. I know that I talked to the individual that gives the commitment letters from CWT, and that there was none that was given for y'all or for anybody through the end of 2021. That's that's all that I can speak on. And if I'm not mistaken, I think you told the people up there that he met all the requirements. He does meet all the setback requirements. He does. That, that you were going to take. You would suggest that they table it because of science. No, I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't tell them to the table because of science. They said they, they they discussed what they want to do. I said, are y'all is what the planning commission wants to do going to be recommend tabling it to do further research on biosecurity and waiting on a commitment letter? And their answer said yes. I think they were really concerned with the biosecurity. That's what we spent the most time on because there has been discussions of density and the effects of closely, you know, closely dense chicken houses in the county. That's been, that's been discussed previously and, and, and this kind of just shed light back on it again. It kind of said, yeah, this is something that we have said that we need to look at and, and this is the reason why we need to look at it. It's, you know, it's before us again. So, um, I, and, I, and I have, and I did, I did reach out to multiple reputable sources in the biosecurity world. Um, and they did say integrators are the ones that normally handle that. Um, but they, there was concern 
in the North Georgia area with how densely packed poultry houses are. So is that going to become a rule, a law, or the, a one? The, the Planning Commission will review it, and if we find that we need to change it for setbacks between between different uh, poultry operations, then we would recommend amending the zoning text to the Board of Commissioners. They could either amend it or not amend it. If they chose to amend it, then that would become part of the you know, part of the setback, part of the requirements for building poultry house. I know that our county is known for the, for the chicken business. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. It makes a very good living. Right. Uh, I don't, it doesn't matter to you, Reese. That's not. Well, that was the big issue. That's not. Awesome. Well, I don't. I don't recall. I don't recall the resale, but. Um, uh, I do know that it come up because I don't hear it. Okay. Well, it's because they're asking was it for resale. One of the ladies. She might. She might ask for resale, but that's that's just a you know factor to consider as well. Um, I. She might have asked. I, I, But you did get it. But I, I got tabled, I guess, two weeks. It was like 90 days before I went before the board of And that's possible under the. Yeah, it was, two, it was two times they tabled me before I went. But like I said, at that time, the table was used as a reason to, to slow you down to go through the process. Well, anytime, anytime you recommend tabling it, it it's, it's to gather. Information. More information. Right. They, they don't feel like they have everything they need to make to make the appropriate decision. So I, again, I don't know which one it was. I can I, I can go back and look, figure it out. But I wasn't I wasn't here at the time. Does anybody else speak against it? Okay, we'll move on. I will say as a board member, we have table stuff in order to get more information, like they were saying. We you know, I don't want to vote on something when I don't have all the information, you know. I mean it, it is what it is. Okay. You sure don't want somebody voting on something when they man, I need to know this, you know, so Sometimes it hurts, but you have to do it. Thank you, Mr. Franklin. Uh, at this time, without objection, we're going to adjourn the public hearing, and we'll call the regular board meeting to order in just a few moments. So as of now, the public hearing is adjourned. <laughs>